I'm Toby Hodges. This is the Alan E6, which we are sailing for European Yacht of the Year trials, Port Genesta off Barcelona. boat yet? Well, a land you're probably familiar with for their long history of building cruising yachts and performance cruising yachts uh, and skis in Slovenia. Now this is E6 translates their E-line. They have three different lines of boats. An impression, sort of straight out cruising and, and charter boats. Uh, the GT line of more luxury uh, cruising yachts and this E-Line, which is their performance cruising yachts. And the E6 replaces what was their 450 popular model and is a, yeah, good looking contemporary fast cruising yacht. Now, the standard boat is designed to fit in that, exact, exactly that, a performance cruising category. Designer Rob Humphreys describes it as a 60-60 so you can take the standard boat and either push it towards racing or push it towards cruising. The one we're on, uh, pushing towards cruising. So it is an 11.2 ton displacement yacht and uh, with all the equipment on this one, including water maker gen set, this, um, this fake teak decking, it is all in about 12.7 tons, I believe. 46.7 feet on deck, not including the front. That's the length of the hull, not including the bowsprit. And you can see bowsprit here is a pretty chunky affair. Just been doing a little bit of side by side sailing here with the Italia yachts, 1298 there. But you can probably see from this angle and uh, also from from off the boat, yeah, it's a voluminous boat. There's plenty of beam there and there's plenty of freeboard. Uh, and that interprets to, uh, that translates to power and to volume as well. So we're currently sailing in nine knots wind, 30 knots apparent. So it's about a 35, 37 degree pan wind angle when we're sailing at six and a half, 6.7 knots currently. Just going through the tack now. So they have a what they call a classic sail setup. So it's an over, always an overlapping genoa, don't offer a self-tacking jib and yeah, stack pack style main instead of a uh, in mast furling. So it's meant to, meant to be able to sail uh, with performance intentions. Outboard shroud base and uh, the actual longitudinal jib track on the deck rather than the coach roof. So there's only a yeah, certain height, height you can get to pointing. A nice low flat coach roof with a long hand, handrail along it and you see the uh, you know a track rails there they've got car pullers for them here this line is leading aft back to a cam cleat here in the, in the top itself otherwise quite a classic setup so you've got a well here for the spray hood running rigging on, on the jammers and the two coach roof winches and as standard you get six winches in here so you've got your primaries here and then german led main cheese system on a traveler which is recessed below the decks there. This one is actually upgraded its winches and has a hydraulic backstay as well. In the cockpit itself you've got nice deep went nice deep benches which are angled, pretty comfortable actually. And yeah, especially that one facing aft. 
and then there's various options for how cruising oriented you want to have this cockpit so you can see these um, removable lockers aft and the table itself so you can have a fixed table this one has uh, four sets of carbon legs which are in that locker there good sized bench lockers by the way each side uh, and then you've got two tables which sit on the two legs each side so you just set those up when you're in anchor and then this side I believe is a grill yeah so get anchored up stand out on the swim platform grill your freshly caught fish and then you've got fridge in there for your beers and soft drinks this large hatch beneath me here is a big locker but it's big enough to contain an eight person life raft then you've got these large foot rests yeah, here as well so then, you can set yeah. this up okay. you've got a nice angled foot rest for the helmsman so the wind's just piped up a bit to nine and a half nine nine to ten knots true and we're getting up to seven and a half a bit more going upwind Geno, so now we're going to try the code zero which you can see is rigged just in front of the uh, of the Genoa furler here there she blows Making eight and a half knots here, 60 degrees apparent. In 12 and a half true. Good power here. Managed to get a lovely bit of code sailing in. Breeze cropped up from nowhere and you can see it's dying again now. So as we head back towards the port at the end of the day, good chance to have a look inside as well. So this was developed uh, by four parties, basically a collaboration for this for this E6, and that's Elan, obviously in Slovenia, Rob Humphreys Yacht Design, Humphreys Yacht Design in Limington, the UK, and the Italian design studio Pininfarina, who have done all the styling and the interior design, and then Gurit uh, for the engineering, and it's pretty impressive really the results outside and in uh, this is a big spacious welcoming impressive 45 ish size yacht so you can see that plenty of freeboard from the outside buys plus the beam buys you a lot of volume in here it's a big boat so I can just reach the handrail particularly on the at heel you know that's getting quite tall um, so it's over seven foot headroom here in the companionway but look at that for a spacious saloon it's massive really nice attention to the indirect and direct lighting as well plenty of natural light so you've got two overhead hatches there long coach roof windows and the hull ports as well layout wise it's offered as a three cabin with two heads as we're seeing on this model and also you can, not that Elan believe many will, although a couple have chosen out of the 11 so far, to have a fourth cabin as well. So what that would mean is you can see the grooves in the headlining here. So you'd get an extra cabin on this side and the heads would shrink. You can see here it would be, you'd get a smaller heads area in here. As things are, massive great double bed forward here. Quite cool with this lighting isn't it the way the lines all move forward like that quite futuristic anyway yes yeah, step up each side of this berth as well and there is good stowage throughout whether it's in lockers whether it's below berths uh, or in shelves as well so uh, plenty of space in there below in the shelving You've got raised cupboards as well and there is uh, stowage beneath this berth as well so you have 
the batteries there for the barrel thruster and then you've got a couple of suitcases in there further forward is is the water tank so i think it's about 350 liters of water 220 of fuel by memory and there's yeah turn the lights on in here there we go so there's the heads and uh and separate shower enclosure it comes a bit of a wet room in here but for this ensuite for this forward cabin and then a big locker here which is um well it's just up to the owner to specify whether it's hanging space or shelving this has a bit of both on it but plenty of room in there solid fiddles around all the furniture so i haven't, I haven't mentioned that have i so the furniture is all in oak and you can choose different shades of oak and but yeah when pin and farina did the design they did all these white areas in black which you can specify as well but uh, the yard had chosen for this first model first first hull to launch to get a more brighter lighter look but still you get those contrasts of the black and the white nice styling touches on there as well and yeah rounded furniture everything everything fiddled including all the corian and yeah, the other thing to mention is it'll land do everything in-house so whether it's this corian they're very good at their grp work and their cabinetry as well for a production yard it's good attention to detail and quality of finish they use Cymarine and a fellow slovenian company for their uh, digital switching and switch panel here so intelligible to understand main switches DC panel and AC panel there and can I do this with one hand I don't know we'll see but it good access to all of that uh, to the fuse is behind which are you know car style fuses easy to get anywhere you go uh, so yeah those are going for digital switching it's you've got intelligible switches that manual on and off behind there as well and easy to get at the wiring and the fuses it's modern as well it, it's it's not only just feels big it that pin and farina design influences really does come through here comfortable furnishings they don't have a dedicated chart table they call it a, a flip-flop style one so you've got a little desk area here with uh yeah just basic instruments next to it and a stereo so you can sit either side of that got a little lift top to it um, either working on your laptop or doing some chart work and then that just lifts up and rotates round to form uh, a full berth there so you can see with that up and and the other side as well same size you can easily get eight seated around this this floorboard here also lifts up and you can see these fiddled parts on here which the floorboard sits into and that converts there's an extra cushion in the in the aft cabin that fills in there to make it a, a kid's den or a day bed area so there's a tv option on this bulkhead and then uh yeah you can get a couple of kids settled settled in there while you're while you're on passage or whatever nice safe area um, or for an extra obviously an extra berth as well again plenty of raised stowage up there uh, there's stowage beneath here and there yes there's engine noise while i do this coming from this we're doing six knots under engine as we go back into port but well, it's a good time to show you around anyway so there's the easy access uh, to some tools etc below that aft seating of this of the saloon area while we're here uh there is uh, plenty of build access as well, but this is a good one to show you because uh, we can see the keel bolts for a start. And you can also see how chunky the structures are. So Elan were early on to vacuum infusion um, and they do their GRP work very well. So this is a uh, finer Leicester Holland deck and it's all vacuum infused in the first shot there you see the first shot of the vacuum infusion and then they do the second one for all the longitudinal um, and vertical structures. 
so pretty solid looking structures under there. Got the bottle stowage under the main saloon table. Here's the second heads. And a separate shower area in there as well. Good light coming in. And then you've got a classic L-shaped galley. These switches are really nice actually. Light switches, so we've got them all on at the moment, but um, you can just have the overheads or just the indirects, etc. Yeah, so the standard galley comes with this big front opening fridge. You can also opt to have a secondary one there. And you get a small um, two-part sink there. So all this corian work done in-house, and again it's fiddled. You know, standard three burner gimbaled stove and good stowage surrounding it. Soft closing drawers, big raised lockers there for the pantry stuff. And some wine glass stowage, yeah, behind. Extra stowage behind there as well. And more bottle stowage in the bilges as well. Half cabins are near enough identical, so as that one's got some cushions and other gear on, I will show you more the uh, starboard side one here. Again, lots of let headroom here as you move in. So I'm guessing over seven foot easily. Uh, small ventilation port out the top and then one into the cockpit as well. Massive, great wardrobe you go in there. Plenty of room, again, you can have that hanging rail in there or big deep shelves in there uh, with extra shoe stowage further down. Reading lights each side. All of these reading lights have uh, USB sockets on them as well. So you got a big double cabin. And then here, technical space access and further aft access into the steering gear. So there's the aft access. You can see the quadrant here on the starboard side. Two quadrants are connected. So if you lost steering on one side, you can still steer, still control it from the other. And then this is where you can hear and see the aft end of the sail drive here. So this is where a generator would go. And then you've got the uh, AC unit and water maker and heater. Uh, in here in the central section. Good amount of space actually between those cabins. There's also another panel there, each side, each cabin to get up the engine room. Probably maybe ask for have a, yeah, some insulation on there as well if you're gonna be sleeping here with the engine on. And then all of the steps there lift up on gas struts to what re reveal what would be a standard of 57 horsepower Yanmar, and this is the upgraded 80 horsepower. Sail drive, so you've got the impeller this end, filters there, good access as you've seen all around it. Might be able to see the slight angle to these benches from this side. Nice, makes it nice and comfortable, and it's good and deep in here, so protection. The other thing I like is, um, these pedestals so they're fashioned in house and you've got the repeaters here so when you're sitting out board and helming yeah you can see an instrument panel there it does mean there's no space for a trimmer but it's easy for helmsmen uh, to trim or control the main sheet and and the um, traveler controls you see from here how the coach reef line is taken right forward i mean it's nice and sleek uh, and there's a slight uh, bulwark here as well but it's flush and it's and it runs all the way forward to give you all that headroom in the forward cabin and then you get a good sail locker in here so you've got the uh, you've got a generator in there at the moment and further forward the windlass powered windlass on this with controls there and a good size chain locker the big composite bowsprit here with the anchor roller underneath it and the um, well, the bowsprit is included as standard and you can specify a, a longer one for racing as well. And this one has integral general, general furler and 
obviously the code zero further on there as well. So you see it's a big old cockpit, but I do think it's missing having tail bags integrated in the design as well. It would have been nice because you saw from the sailing it's easy for the interior or cockpit to have a lot of tailing light, tail lines, the end of the ropes snaking around here. But so yeah, I guess bags would need to be added to keep that tidy. So this Elan starts at 430,000 euros XVAT. The boat we're on is more like 700, but that's including all of the sails, a lot of sails, over 100 grand's worth of sail on this. And there's also a lot of options, including permatic decking, aircon, water heat, I mean, heating system, everything like that. Really enjoyed the sail. It's been, I've been looking forward to doing this one. And uh, yeah, glad we, we, got a, we got a good breeze to do it. Hope you enjoyed the tour. See you next time. Thank you.